I'm so proud and privileged to be here as the Dean of Humanities. You know, history is a central discipline in the humanities, and it is one of the most important and rele relevant subjects that we can share with our citizens. It involves far more than a simple examination of the past. It is an illumination of the present, and to those who heed its lessons, it is a guide for the future. Montgomery County, as we see annually at this very conference, boasts a rich history. And for the past 75 years, Montgomery College has been an important component of that history. In 1944, more than 12 million servicemen and women queued up for demobilization. The GI Bill was signed into law by President Roosevelt in June of 1944 and provided the opportunity for many returning veterans to pay for a college education. As a result, the colleges and universities across the country quickly filled to capacity. Non-veterans, women, high school graduates, they were all often left to seek employment and delay their college goals. So to increase opportunities for all Marylanders, Governor Herbert R. <coughs> O'Connor appointed a commission on higher education to establish two-year public institutions, what he called a chain of junior colleges throughout the state. With a $10,000 grant from the Maryland Department of Higher Education and matching funds from Montgomery County, the county's Board of Education acted quickly and opened Montgomery Junior, junior College for the fall semester. The first classes were held in the evenings at the Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. There was a student body of 186 students, eight faculty that included an administrator. Growing rapidly, the college then purchased the Bliss Electrical School right outside of the District of Columbia in Tacoma Park. Continuing to grow, the college then purchased land in Rockville through the help of a very generous donor. The Rockville campus opened its doors to students in 1965. As populations moved to the north in Montgomery County, expansion of the college moved north as well. In 1978, the Germantown campus welcomed students on their campus. Today, Montgomery College has campuses still Germantown, Rockville, and Tacoma Park, Silver Spring, as well as training and community engagement centers and offsite programs throughout the county. The college also offers a variety of online programs, including fully online degrees. It's my honor and my privilege to welcome our distinguished panelists, each of whom has played a role in the college's history. Please welcome Council Member Sydney Katz, Marcelino and Maribel Albornoz. They are the parents of Council Member Albornoz, Anita Powell from the Alumni Board, Trustee Gloria Aparicio Blackwell, and Fernando Andrade, an engineer who was one of the first undocumented students to attend the Germantown campus. Welcome and thank you all for your participation today. Without further ado, I turn the panel over to my friend and colleague, Dr. Maria Spring of the Anthropology Department at Montgomery College. Thank you very much, Dr. Fector. It is truly an honor to be here. Uh, just for those of you who do not know me, I am Maria Sprain. I teach anthropology on uh, the Germantown campus and I have been with Montgomery College full time since 2008. Um, I do wanna mention Carla Silvestre, who was really the uh, one whose idea this was. Uh, she is the uh, MC Director of community engagement. So thank you, Carla, for getting us all together. Um, what I would like to do is ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves and uh, mm -hmm. provide a little bit of background about their relationship through time with Montgomery College. Uh, so um, I would like to ask uh, first um, Mrs. Powell to start with that. Good afternoon. Again, my name is Anita Neal Powell. I am the founding president of the Lincoln Park Historical Foundation the Leroy E. Neal African American Research Center, the only one of its kind in Montgomery County. I am the author of several publications on black history, historical places and sites, tracking the footprints of African American project, which led me to research 
Carver Junior College and its relationship with Montgomery College, founder of the annual Maryland African American Preservation Conference and advocate for diversity and inclusion in American history and voting rights. I am also one of the first black women from Montgomery County, Maryland to receive the Maryland's Top 100 Women's Award. More recently, a recipient of the Roscoe R. Nix Distinguished Community Service Award. I am a lifelong resident of Montgomery County, graduate of Richard Montgomery High School, and I obtained my Bachelor of Public Administration from the University of the District of Columbia. As a founder of a nonprofit organization, I received a certificate of leadership from Montgomery College's Nonprofit Leadership Institute. As a member of the Montgomery College Board of Governors, I have chaired the association bylaws, nominating and legislative committees. Currently, I am the assistant coordinator of the association's new member engagement project, team lead on the history of Montgomery College's sister institution, George Washington Carver Junior College, featured in the Insight Alumni Magazine and participated in other forms of community <laughs> communications, dialogues. Although I have a lot more to say, I will end my introduction here and I look forward to the panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so impressive. I can't wait to hear more. Uh, so uh, let's hear an introduction from Marisol and Marcelo Albornoz, please. Okay, uh, I'll go first. My name is Marcelo Albornoz. I've been retired for about nine years. Currently, I have the pleasure to be with my four grandkids and partake in their activities. My time is also spent going to our condo in Rehoboth Beach. There's a saying in Spanish, el mar la vida es más sabrosa, which means life <laughs> is more delicious at the beach. I attended Montgomery College at Tacoma and Rockville from 1967 to 1970, graduating with an Associate of Arts degree. This was my stepping stone to get my Bachelor's of Science degree at the University of Maryland in 1978. And later my Master's of Science degree in Financial Management at the Benjamin Franklin University in Washington, DC. My MC degree opened the door to start my career at the Bureau of National Affairs. The company the company paid for my part-time tuition to all my subsequent degrees, which led to my promotion as general accountant at the company. I stayed with the company 37 years until my retirement. I enjoyed my classes at MC because of the small number of students per class, and consequently, the friendly and rewarding relationship with the teachers. For example, Mr. Salens was my math teacher. And he explained algebra, et cetera, in such a way that made me understand its beauty and usefulness. Thank you. My name is Marisol Albornoz. I went to Montgomery College in 1971, 70. Um, I am currently retired and enjoying the same grandchildren that he is <laughs> and just having fun and helping out with the family. Um, and as uh, you mentioned, the Dean mentioned, yes, we are the parents of Gabriel, Gabe Albernoz, a councilman. So we in turn help out with as much as we can with their kids while he's busy working with the council. Um, I worked, I, after, I did not graduate from Montgomery College. I got an offer uh, for a study abroad because art was my deal. Um, I started in the Tacoma Park campus, which was really old. Uh, in fact, I think some of the buildings were condemned afterwards. <laughs> it was a bit of a matchbox, uh, but so much fun. And then because of my interest in art, I moved to the Rockville campus, which was brand new and big, and it was just delightful. And as Marcelo said, the classes were smaller. So it was really a good stepping stone for someone who, well, financial reasons, of course, it was good because it wasn't as expensive as a four-year college. And also for people that didn't really know what they wanted to do with their lives. So it kind of put yourself in perspective. Um, it was in a time where it was uh, the Vietnam War. So there were a lot of unrests 
uh, civil rights was a huge deal. Um, but all overall, it was just a wonderful experience. Our meeting places were the cafeteria um, with all the guys that were coming back from Vietnam, um, which was a very sad period. Um, so now retired, enjoying kids and just having a good time, enjoying life. Thank you so much. Those introductions really underscore some of the wonderful things that uh, Montgomery College still offers today. But that historical perspective is just fantastic. Thank you. Um, Council Member Katz, would you like to introduce yourself next? I would, and please call me Sydney. I am Sydney Katz, and good afternoon, all. It's good seeing the panel, and, and, and I'm enjoying being here already. I'm a member of the Montgomery County Council. Um, I represent District 3. Uh, I'm the former mayor of Gaithersburg and a former small business owner. Uh, the business was started by my grandparents in Gaithersburg in 1918. I'm a lifetime resident of Montgomery County, as, wa as was my mother. She was born here as well. I attended Montgomery College from 1968. I graduated Gaithersburg High School in 1968 until 1970, and then I did not get a, an, a, a, an AA from uh, Montgomery College because I transferred to the University of Maryland uh, College Park, where I received a bachelor's of science degree in business and public administration, and that is what I ended up doing in my life. I didn't really think I was going to need the public administration side of that degree, but I've used that throughout my life as well, and I did attend Rockville campus. Looking forward to the to the hearing the other members of the panel and the questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sydney. Um, Fernando Andrade, would you like to go next with an introduction? Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Uh, muy buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure being here, and I'm looking forward to listen to everyone's story. Uh, my name is Fernando Andrade. I'm originally from Ecuador, but I live more than half of my life in Montgomery County. I am a MCPS uh, Montgomery College product. Um, I currently am a, an IT uh, program manager. That it's uh, what my career has led from a technical to a managerial role now with it &T for the last eight years. And um, I, like I said, I went to Montgomery College um, after finishing uh, high school. I did, uh, I went to uh, Gatorsboro High School. I graduated from Gatorsboro High School. Uh, I was, uh, like many of you, uh, had some uh, hard times uh, with regards to uh, funding and how to pay for college. And Montgomery College was one of those venues that allowed me to uh, be able to afford college, especially when my parents were making minimum wage uh, at that point in time in our career and in my life and in my parents' life. Uh, it was a, a major challenge to be, find a way to pay for it. Um, I did get my math, my uh, AA uh, from Montgomery College as a business major. I originally thought I was gonna be an accountant but life, it's funny, and sometimes you kind of start learning things that are more interesting. Um, I actually ended up going more into computer science, and eventually um, I, I took additional classes in Montgomery College, and I transferred to Johns Hopkins University. I got my uh, information systems degree from uh, uh, Johns Hopkins, and as well as I decided that if I'm there, I might as well continue and complete uh, my master's. I got my master's in telecommunications and IT. And at the end, I was like, I'm here already. Might as well get my MBA. And thank God I was able to complete all that. Um, it's been a great experience for me to be at Montgomery College. And I don't have anything other than great things to say about it. And with that, Maria, that's uh, for now all I have. Thank you so much for another wonderful introduction. And yes, um, life is funny, isn't it, sometimes? And I see a lot of students <laughs> changing their minds while they're at Montgomery College, as uh, 
you know, their journey continues. So I'm really excited to hear more from your story as well. And of course, last but not least, Gloria Aparicio Blackwell, we'd love to hear your introduction. Thank you, Maria. Uh, what an honor to be here today and with this pristine group of people. Um, I'm excited to, to share with you my journey. And I think my journey started with this institution, with Montgomery College. I am originally from Venezuela, and I studied in Venezuela safety and fire science. So I decided to pursue my bachelor's degree here in the United States, and I came to the state of Maryland. And when I came here, of course, um, some of us take classes in a high school of languages, and I thought my English classes that I took in high school were going to be fine, and I will be doing great here when I came to the United States. Little to know, that was a big mistake because not was everything about this is the window, this is the door. It was more profound than that. So, Montgomery College was my safe, my life, uh, my safe, save my life. And the reason why it says save my life because if you don't, if you come to an institution that doesn't welcome you, that doesn't make sure that the space is for you, then you are going to be start doubting yourself. You're going to be discouraged. You're going to say, I had to go back. This place, Montgomery College was so welcoming. I started in Tacoma Park and it, right, Tacoma Park was, uh, I can see that needed some TLC, but it was so nice to see the amount of people, the, the diversity of the people. I was so excited to meet people from all over the world. And that was the big uh, plus for me to be part of Montgomery College. Then I, because of Montgomery College knew about that I have my safety degree, uh, what I needed to do was to learn the language. They gave me opportunity to be a student worker. So I was working in the office of the safety office. I started with the public safety and then with the safety office and I was practicing the language while I was applying the knowledge that I brought from abroad. That was another set of skills that I learned from them. And from that, I went to, then I transferred to uh, the University of Maryland College Park, go Terp, uh, uh, council member Katz. And with that, I, I said, I owe this. I owe what I am right now to this institution. Then someone called me and I said, Gloria, do you want to apply for the board, the board of trustee for Montgomery College? I said, what? I don't have money. I'm just kind of someone that works here and that's it. I <laughs> positions generally are for wealthy individuals and with a lot of experiences. And I said, well, your story can match that. I told the story that I'm telling you right now. And then I got a call from the governor, you're appointed. In 2009, I began my journey in that, with that kind of a sense of giving back to an institution that have given me so much. And I have stayed in Montgomery County because I knew that Montgomery County invested on me. I got received some scholarships and now I'm paying back triple, quadruple the times because this is what these institutions, if they have a good vision and mission, and I know what Montgomery College does, and I make sure that we continue doing with the board, with my functions at the board, that we have so many people that are very successful and give back to this. So the county have invested in me and I have, and, and it's a good investment. The return of investment has paid triple, quadruple, as I said before. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you so much, Gloria. I think you just underscored uh, the sense of community that we have here with the, you know, receiving and being welcomed and then giving back. That's just fantastic. Um, and it's one of the reasons I love teaching at Montgomery College. Um, so uh, before I uh, pose the next question, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background about, about me. Um, so my grandfather would be uh, really proud that I love teaching as a professor. Uh, he was a historian, a diplomat, and a refugee of the Spanish Civil War who left his country in 1939 with nothing, and he never returned to live there permanently. He understood loss. He would tell us, la educación es lo más importante que tienes y lo único que nadie te puede quitar, which means education is the most important thing you have and the only thing that no one can take away from you. The values of my grandfather align with those of Montgomery College and its mission to empower students to change their lives and to contribute to their communities. Montgomery College's Origins began, as 
Dean Fector has already so uh, nicely laid out for us, with fewer than 200 students, mostly World War II veterans in 1946. Classes were held at BCC High School in the evenings and on the weekends. Today, more than 55,000 students from about 160 countries attend the college. Montgomery College welcomes and supports all, A-L-L -L in capitals, <laughs> supports all people who pursue education. And this is true more than, now more than ever. At MC, all people refers to more than just differences in race and ethnicity and extends to gender, age, socioeconomic status, religion, political affiliation, spoken language, residency status, disabilities, sexual orientation, and of course, military status. MC's 75 year history covers an era of monumental change. In its first decade, MC at the time called Montgomery Junior College was a segregated institution. Then in 1955, eight black students joined 699 white students at the MJC uh, Tacoma Park campus. So um, I'd like to turn over uh, this story to, um, to Anita. Uh, she has uh, some important um, things to say about Montgomery College's earliest moves toward equity and inclusion. So Anita, would you like to take over? So thank you, Maria. Good afternoon again. It is interesting that today I will be focusing on something I started many years ago with tracking the footprints of African Americans. And before I share my story with you on equity and inclusion, I want to read you my quote of the 90s. History cannot be changed nor erased, nor can it serve as a pretense that certain events never took place during our time or that of our forefathers. Rather, history should be viewed as a way to better understand who we are as a people, as a community, and as a nation. We must apply the knowledge we gain from the wealth of information that has been shared with us, as it can aid us in our endeavors to acknowledge the past, to live in the present, and to prepare for the future. So here we are today still talking about and we'll continue to talk about until we get it right with equity and inclusion for all people. And it is never too late to start. My journey of getting it right starts with segregated schools and colleges. I grew up in an era of where schools were separated by race. I'm a product of the historically black community of Lincoln Park here in Rockville. In 1999, the members of the community and others celebrated the 100th anniversary of Lincoln Park. This included our first historical parade, community interviews, and moreover, to come together as to showcase the history of our community. In researching and preparing for the celebration of our 100th anniversary, I discovered we had a HBCU in our community a historically black college named George Washington Carver Junior College. You may ask, how did I uncover the history of the college? Well, you may or may not know that Rockville is a seat of Montgomery County. We had three black high schools and one college. We never had more than one high school existing at the same time. When Rockville Colored High School was no longer in existence, Lincoln High School was built. When Lincoln High School became overcrowded, George Washington Carver High School and Junior College was built to house students to traveling from across Montgomery County. Both the Lincoln High School Junior High and Carver High Junior College buildings are still standing and have been designated by the Rockville Historic District Commission. So we know those buildings will always be included in the Montgomery County and City of Rockville history books. So as we share stories about equity and inclusion, I was so excited that we have ownership of our school buildings, the buildings where we received our education during segregated times. The buildings today are not just standing alone. The Carver Building is the headquarters of the Board of Education, and the Lincoln Building is a home to the Crusaders Baptist Church of God, which is a story for another time to discuss equity and inclusion as it should be. Today, we are focusing on Carver Junior College and its relationship with Montgomery College. 
After discovering we had a junior college in the community that I grew up in, again, excitement for me was overwhelming. I met with, Dr., with the late Dr. Oliver Lancaster, the director of the Department of Human Relations, and Paul L. Vance, superintendent of Montgomery County Public Schools, to share the story with them. I was encouraged by Dr. Lancaster to continue my research on the college, and with his blessing, I was able to join in partnership with his office. I was allowed office space, tools, and staff to conduct my research. At the end of the day, several things occurred as a result. The building we call Calvert was the second site of, jun of the junior college. The first site was located in the Lincoln High School building in Lincoln Park. The Calvert building was designated in 2002. With the assistance of Dr. Lancaster's office, we were able to publish the Hub of Public Education, Secondary Education for Negro Students, 1876 to 2000. My next stop was to continue with the search by interviewing students who attended college in the Lincoln High building. Interviews occurred and the first six <laughs> students who graduated were recognized by the former mayor of Rockville, Rose Krasnov. Again, we are talking about equity and inclusion. My next stop was to share my story with staff at Montgomery College, especially since I was serving on the Board of Governors and Association. Well, today, it gives me a great opportunity to share my story with you. My story to you is Dr. Paulette Moore, who served as principal and dean of the Lincoln High School, Junior High School, and Junior College. He was a man with a vision to provide a higher learning institution for black students to attend a community college in Rockville. <laughs> During this time in our segregated history, Negro students, as we were called, could not attend Montgomery Junior <laughs> College. So not to deprive black students of a quality higher education, Dr. Hughes Price, the founding dean of Montgomery Junior <laughs> College, and Dr. Paulette Moore met and came up with a plan to make sure that black students who wanted to attend college could but it had to be segregated because it had to be a segregated black college in Montgomery County, Maryland. After integration took place, a merger between Montgomery Co Junior College and Carver Junior College took place. From the merger, black and white students, staff and others attended or, attended or worked at both colleges. As we close with a focus on equity and inclusion, we find that based on all the research and work done by myself and others did matter. In fact, as Montgomery College moves towards its 75th anniversary, George Washington College Junior College will be noted as a sister institution and will be included as part of that anniversary. Is it fair? Yes, it is. Is it inclusion? Yes, it is. We are again listed in not only Montgomery County and City of Rockville History Book. We are now a part of the Montgomery College history as well. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you so much, Nita, for that really, really important story. I'm already thinking about next year's history conference when you will tell the other stories that you mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Did you also find pictures and all of your research of the early days? Oh, yes. A lot. And a lot of the students, not a lot, because some have passed away. And of course, you know, they're on the other side, but they're seasoned saints, we call them. They're still living and they're still telling their stories, which is totally beautiful. And I guess back in 19, well, around 1999, we were able, there was a guy by the name of Dr. James C. Moon who said, interview the old people first, because once they die, so will the history. So I have a whole lot of history. And it's in the, you know, the Leroy E. Neal African American Research Center. So yes, I have lots of pictures, lots of interviews, a lot of videos, a lot of tapes. You know, we really dug deep to get that history because it was important. That's just fantastic. We are so lucky in our county to have you and your awesome research yeah. skills. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, this uh, question is for our other panelists. Um, so I'd like you to speak to the values of Montgomery College, particularly its welcoming ethos um, for all. 
So either from your perspective taking classes at Montgomery College or with your involvement with Montgomery College today. And I think that we could start with the algorithmosis. Okay, I'll go first. Um, of course, my, my experience uh, uh, was uh, with the soccer team at Montgomery College. I'm proud to say that I was a member of the first soccer team ever in Montgomery College. So a little bit of background, uh, in 1967, the high schools in the area, Montgomery Blair, Whitman, Walter Johnson, had soccer teams, but not Montgomery College. So there was an effort to correct this anomaly. There was no qualified soccer coach to tap as a, as a resource for uh, a soccer coach in Montgomery College. So they called the baseball coach, Mr. Bickey, to take over the program. Not being that familiar with the sport, he recruited yeah. most 15 members for the team from uh, a foreign student pool. I joined, uh, I was uh, moderate in knowledge and skill when I joined the team. But there were others, for example, this player from the Middle East who took his time he took off his glasses to head the ball. <laughs> it, it was the most hilarious thing. Um, so you can imagine, in spite of our record, uh, I enjoyed the relationships with the other players and I enjoyed traveling for away games. Uh, it was always a lot of fun. Um, but you know what? We laid the foundation for a subsequent soccer teams and many of those went on to win junior college championships at the national level. So we laid the foundation and it took off. <laughs> well, what I can say about the school is that you made great friends, um, but in 1969, in December 1st was when they enacted the unfortunate way of sending people to war. So it was the lottery. And everybody, they did it by people that were born between 1955 and 1975 were the ones that were going to be sent. So it was from 18 to 25 years old, uh, the draft. So I graduated from Northwood High School in 69, and all that we could ever talk about was not graduation, was not the prom, was what number are you? Because obviously, the smaller the number, for sure you were going to go. So at that time, the only way to get out of this was to go to college, either go to college or be a conscientious objector or move to Canada um basically run away so the colleges were full absolutely full everywhere universities everywhere in the country it was a way to get out of it um you didn't have another choice so montgomery college sometimes it, i remember being in a, in a lecture for example of 200 students which was a lot um, and a teacher would say, okay, this half is going to go on and your other half, you're not going to make it. So you might as well get out of my class now so you can give room for someone else. I mean, it was just, it was a violent time. It was stressful. It was scary. Um, we had at the same time, the civil rights movement, which somehow got integrated with everything else, the Vietnam demonstrations against the war. Uh, we had at one time, I remember more than once actually, the burning of the flag in the middle of the um, buildings. Um, we had to be sent home, there was tear gas. Um, we also had actually uh, Angela Davis come, who was very much of an activist um, to talk to us and it, it got, ugly because people were like, well, 
what are you doing? You know, I mean, why do we have to be in this war? And she was obviously very much against it. But at the same time, she was also uh, doing the civil rights things. So it, it, it was all convoluted. Um, but we used to spend the time, the free time at the cafeteria. The cafeteria was definitely the place to go. Then you could see all the veterans there. You became friends. Uh, some were still, you know, they had shrapnel, they had limbs missing. Uh, I mean, it was, it was tough. It was a very difficult time. And the Latin community at that time, I'm originally from Chile. I came in 1962. Um, the Latin community was mostly from kids from parents of the World Bank, of the Interdevelopment Bank, the OAS, uh, you know, embassies too. Uh, it wasn't the mass that we have today. So it was in that sense, it was also very different, but very welcoming, always welcoming. You never felt like you were from somewhere else. You were just another person trying to study, trying to get ahead, trying to make a living in the future um, and positioning yourself in your life. Uh, so I truly, truly enjoyed it. The art department in Rockville was excellent, was really exceptional. Uh, they had wonderful teachers, wonderful teachers. Uh, like I said, I did not finish there, but you know, I, I ended up working then 40 years in a nurse in, in a medical facility in a medical office. Um, and even till today, I still see people that went to Montgomery College at our time and friends of ours that still try to get together. Um, so it was definitely part of history, definitely part of history. Thank you so much for those stories. Very, very powerful. Thank you. Sydney, would you like to go next? Thank you. And, and thank you for allowing me to, to be on this panel, to be with, with, uh, with such a, a great group of people, and really to give me the opportunity to reminisce a little bit, though I do that every now and then. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm, I am a person of history. I, I enjoy uh, history, especially at Montgomery County. Um, but, you know, not only that, this gives me an opportunity to, to let people remember once again how much we appreciate and how thankful we are for Montgomery College. And it has had a couple of names. It was Montgomery Junior College, and we called it MJC. I don't know that yes. anyone ever called it its full name ever. <laughs> and then, of course, it became Montgomery College and MC. But it remains an important part of, of my life and, uh, and my family's as well. Uh, I did go to Rockville, as was mentioned, that it was a new campus in 65, I guess. And um, and it, uh, my middle brother, I have two older brothers. My middle brother, Terry, uh, graduated Gatesburg High School in 1966, and he attended Montgomery College and um, was actually the vice president of the student government at that time. Um, for those of you who are ever wondering what happened to Terry, um, I talk to him all the time. I see him all the time. Um, he, uh, he transferred to uh, Towson and he became a Maryland State Trooper. He retired as a first lieutenant with them and, uh, and still works for them uh, as a civilian in the commercial vehicle enforcement. But he got his start at Montgomery College. And just as an aside, when he went to Towson, he really wanted to be a secondary teacher. That was what his uh, what his desire was in life. He, and it, it just shows you how times change. You couldn't get a job as a secondary teacher. He wanted to be a teacher and be the wrestling coach. And at that time, there just weren't jobs available. So ultimately, he uh, applied for the, for the police departments. But in my case, I graduated Gatesburg High School in 1968. And I enrolled in that, that September. And not only did I receive a great education, as has been mentioned time and time again here, but I've truly made lifelong friends. My family lived in Gaithersburg, but we, Terry and I belonged to a youth group in, in Tacoma Park. 
And so we had friends across the county and you got to see your friends from across the county at Montgomery College. Mostly, I, I never really attended Tacoma Park uh, campus. We would go on the rarest of, of occasion for an event, but, but uh, you, they, most everyone at that time came to Rockville. And not only was it convenient for me from Gaithersburg to Rockville, but it also allowed me the flexibility and scheduling and so that, cause I worked in their family store, my, you know, I always tell people I never really worked. I, I ran my mouth in the family store, but from the time I was 10, I hung around in there. My older brother, I have two older brothers. My older brothers really never liked the store. I always did. And so I would work, uh, you know, and take a, uh, I'd go to the store, I'd leave the store, go to class, come back to the, to the store. And so the Montgomery College allowed me that flexibility as well. And ultimately, I ended up owning the store. The 70s has been mentioned, and it's, it's funny how, you know, I'm only the, the third, per, the third uh, fourth person to speak today. But I'm, I'm, I'm repeating some of what's already been said, but the 70s were very exciting. I mean, whether we wanted them to be or not, they were very exciting. The Vietnam War was raging. And, and in fact, my oldest brother, Alan, who did not go to Montgomery College, he went to Allegheny College in Meanville, Pennsylvania. He was in Vietnam in 1970. And uh, I remember vividly, as, as was mentioned, uh, students walking out of class and, and, uh, and uh, the rallies. And, and I remember uh, afterwards, I, I uh, uh, transferred to, to uh, University of Maryland. I remember Jane Fonda coming to the University of Maryland and closing Route 1. I mean, it was in the helicopters flying overhead when they, you know, with all the excitement at the University of Maryland and the other, the other universities in Washington as well. Um, but I, I can tell you that it was, has always been comforting. And I mean, to this very second, it has always been comforting to know that Montgomery College is, is here. Um, it's, it's grown with the population of Montgomery County. It's, it's changed with the population of Montgomery County. The one thing that hadn't changed, you can get a great education for a, you know, it's, it's always, cost is always something to consider, but it's certainly as, as affordable as any place you're ever going to, to find. Um, I, I, uh, um, I, I could literally go on and on, and I'm gonna try my best to stop here, but I did wanna mention, and it's already been mentioned that, that uh, Gabe Albernaz is, on, on the, is one of my colleagues and a good friend and a, and, he's, and, a, and a wonderful colleague on the Montgomery County Council. But I think it should be mentioned that he's the president of the Montgomery County Council this year. So I, I like to tell people that he's my boss. So you know I have to be nice to the Albernaz, you, you, you realize. <laughs> um, and, and so, um, but I think at the, the bottom line with me is that people have always said that Montgomery College is truly one of the jewels in Montgomery County, and it is. And we, we see it every day. Um, I'm proud to say that I, I and, and Gabe and every other person who's associated with, with edu uh, on the County Council and Board of Education, every person that I know of, and I mean this sincerely, wants to make certain that each of our students, each of our young people, and some are not as young, has the same opportunities to prosper that I've had and that our families have had. And we work towards doing that. And for that, I, I know that the, the professors and everyone else never gets enough thanks, but I wanna say very clearly, thank you for what you're doing. And we stand ready to help you continue to do that. So with that, I, I uh, turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the stories uh, just uh, keep uh, filling in these really important parts of the county's history. And you're absolutely right to be. Montgomery College does span the whole county and people make friends um, and lifelong relationships through the college. And um, now people through the virtual campus are connecting nationally, globally, um, all around the world. And so it's just continuing, but on a much larger scale. So thank you for highlighting that. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, uh, I'd like to turn uh, the um, Zoom over to Fernando Andrade, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Maria. Um, you know, listening to all the stories, um, I think I'm gonna have to fast forward um, maybe one or two decades, a little bit more to the, towards the 90s. 
uh, when uh, a lot of immigration change, uh, the, 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 the population of the United States started changing. Um, and, and one of the things that I, it's, it's, I just keep remembering this quote, it's, uh, you know, diversity is being, uh, in, it's, it's kind of like being invited to the party. This is actually this great quote. Um, it, I can never forget it. And it says basically diversity is being invited to the party and inclusion is being asked to dance. Um, it's probably the most simple, straightforward to, way to um, explain how I feel about being in Montgomery County. And uh, one thing about me that uh, my story started with Montgomery County Public Schools. Uh, this is uh, the first day, I remember the very clearly the first, very first day of high school, um, no English at all. I, my, my dad dropped me to school and I did not want to go to inside because I didn't speak the language. And I figured, you know what? I'm just going to sit here, wait until this is over. And then my dad will come back and pick me up. <laughs> uh, a little naive for, you know, at that point in time. But little did I know that somebody, one teacher, she was actually Korean. Uh, she came and, you know, she saw me like a little puppy, I guess. And she, she realized I was lost. She talked to me. She said a lot of stuff in English I couldn't understand. But at least she hand signaled me. And I think that's the first time I would say, I, I felt like I was part of something. I, I didn't feel like, you know, another number, another head count. Um, and little by little, you know, went to high school, graduated uh, from high school. Um, one of the things that changed drastically uh, in, in the nineties was the immigration status for many people, including myself. Um, the story, of the dreamers, um, if you will, started happening or coming about, I would say early in the nineties. Um, the, the dreamers is a term that was coined back in, in the mid two uh, thousands. Um, so in a sense, I'm more like a pre-dreamer um, because what happened with me, like many people, my immigration status was not final. Um, for simplicity reasons, what that means is that even though that my parents had, and myself had lived here for four full years, we had been working, paying taxes like everybody else. Um, it was almost like we didn't exist, uh, almost like a second class uh, citizen status. Because if you have no, uh, that, that those, during the, that, that time, a uh, final immigration status, the rule was, well, you are an international student. You cannot be considered in county. Um, and the, what the impact of that is, not only do you have sure um, an income that is not a, enough to pay for a lot of things, you don't qualify for any type of financial aid because of, again, immigration status. So everything has to come out of pocket. And in county, it's, rates are roughly one third of what international rates are. Um, so that by, you know, by definition, uh, we, we couldn't afford, uh, I couldn't afford, my parents couldn't pay for anything. Um, and what happened is uh, I've been blessed. God has put people in angels along the way that had always helped me, um, that had always believed and, 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 and always uh, give me a hand. Um, to a certain degree, the way I see a lot of what happened in my life is there were people that had vision, and this is something that gets lost. Having vision mean, it means that you are willing to take on the status quo because you're looking at things as an investment. There's going to be a return on what you're doing. You're not doing it just because you're going to go against the status quo. You're doing it because you want to make things better. And there's a reason behind it. Um, I very clearly remember that uh, at one point in time, I had given up. Uh, I did not think I was going to go to college. And I saw firsthand what happens when people lose hope, when they see there's nowhere else to go. The only thing they go leads to is self-destruction, things that will never be helpful for society, for themselves. And it's only a a very destructive path for everybody. Nobody, nobody wins. Um, what I, when I was in high school, I was blessed to have um, a, a teacher. Uh, her name is uh, Teresa Wright, uh, Mrs. Wright. 
she actually advocated for me. She is my second mother. In a, in a, in a, you know, I'm lucky to be able to say that. And there was, she was able to engage um, Mr. Sherman Helver. He was the director of admissions from Montgomery College. Um, a, against you know all odds at that point in time, Mr. Sherman went uh, you know above and beyond the duty call. He didn't have to do anything. He could just sit there and let let's continue doing the same thing we've been doing it because it's been done that way. And why change? And change is hard. Um, he took the initiative and he was able to open the doors from Montgomery College for me so I could actually afford and, and be in county while my status was being, uh, you know, a, a work in progress. Um, I, I think my story is not the first one uh, in, that would be or the last one. I think this is, a, a, you know, something that continues to happen. Uh, as I mentioned, I do consider that what you're really doing with Montgomery College is having an investment. If you want to look at this from a monetary perspective, uh, the amount of money that I pay on taxes has more than paid for any type of discounts that I get from Montgomery, Co uh, Montgomery College. Um, Montgomery College always felt just like MCPS, welcoming. I, I never felt like an outsider. I never felt like, oh my God, everybody else looks different. And I am, you know, the thing that sticks out. Um, it's been a great experience from a money perspective, from a you know, culture perspective, from any point of view that I see it. And again, it gave me the opportunity to grow into where I am today. And thank God, um, you know, it, it Montgomery College is here and it has an open door policy and allows people that want to take that opportunity to continue uh, moving ahead. Yes. With that said, Maria, um, that's in a nutshell my story. Thank you so much. It really is a story of strength and resilience on your part. And I'm so happy you've been able to dance with angels because <laughs> 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 here, here you are. So thank you. Okay, so um, let's uh, move on and uh, we'll have some time for questions. Um, Gloria Aparicio Blackwell, we'd like to hear from you. You know, thank you. And listening to everyone, uh, so much memories are coming to mind. And Mother Teresa Wright, oh my goodness, <laughs> what an extraordinary human being. And that's the power that I feel, the power of having someone that cares about you, regardless of who you are, regardless if you're related to that individual. It's just that you share your knowledge, passion, and seeing you what you don't see yourself. So that's what I was able to encounter in my early years coming here with no language, which is for some people will say, well, what is it? That's not a big deal. It is because particularly for me that I love to talk and be with people and having that limitation was, and I didn't want to feel different either. I wanted to be kind of get, be part of, of the community and not feeling like people say, what, where, who are you? Uh, why do you speak that way? And all of that, but having individuals that gave you that confidence. So that's what Montgomery College did at those times. And I, now I see people from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. I'm from the 80s. I'm in the disco mode. Uh, that was the time of disco. So um, yes, uh, uh, the Latino population around that time was not as huge either. But when they start coming from Central America and after the war that was taking place, but then uh, the college was a few far in between. And I started in Tacoma Park, as I mentioned before. Then I decided to move to the, go the country club, which was Germantown. <laughs> what a difference. It was like a night and day. Here I was with a lot of people that looked like me in Tacoma Park. And I went to the other side and it was very different. It was, uh, it's kind of like a, the white community was the only uh, predominant in that college. 
but they also welcome me. You know, people might have some other experiences. Thank God the experience that I received at that time was spectacular. Everybody was open. I learned so much. And I believe once again that I have two people that I have to always be thankful. And I'm going to err in the fact that I might be insulting some people that I didn't mention them or they will get mad at me. But there were two key individuals that took their time and are still today friends was Anne White and she was in facilities management and guided me through the process, told me where to go, what to do, and always was there uh, providing me that guidance and I always be in debt with her and John Softy in the safety department here he's the guy this person that is uh, you know working with me with a broken language and doing the technical uh, profession that I had to be doing at that moment and didn't matter Uh, sometimes just with gestures you were able to communicate it's just that you have the knowledge and that person believe in the knowledge that you're bringing to that to that particular moment so i feel that montgomery college have done that in the past and it continues to do today more than ever but that power of intention that everyone even the facilities management folks were amazing. They were with me along the way. They, they provided some answers for the cultural, the new cultural themes that I was getting involved, even with the language that people would say, hit the road. What am I hitting the road for? And what's up? Well, I kept looking up. And so that I was ready to sue the college for that matter because I said, they're not teaching me this idiomatic expression that are making me look like a fool. But that's part of the of the whole learning a language and also be involved with the new culture. So I believe that those aspects continues to be what Montgomery continues to do. And I hope that people here that are listening today take a time to met, to be a mentor. Also serve as a mentee, ask for someone to mentor you, ask someone to be part of that relationship, because sometimes you don't know what the other person is going to find about you that can make you to be in the next level of success of your life. So that's what I feel that Montgomery College has been. And I know that Montgomery College, the work that I do as community engagement for the University of Maryland, I have the, I have the opportunities to found the Office of Community Engagement at the University of Maryland. And one of the things that I see about Montgomery College is that Montgomery College is Montgomery County. And that says a lot. So I think that moving forward, I feel that this institution has so much to bring, so much to give, and so much to to be uh, another economic engine for this community called Montgomery County. Thank you so much, Gloria, for this uh, wonderful stories and um, very clear perspective about Montgomery College. Um, you highlighted some of those cultural speed bumps that a lot of people hit and, uh, and then eventually get over them and uh, have a, make a lot of cultural connections. I see this all the time in, in my classrooms. So thank you. So um, I think that we can open up now for any questions that anybody has. Yes, thank you all so much. Uh, this was a fantastic presentation. Oh, this is great. Uh, Connie Morella is is on board. The Honorable Connie Morella, she's watching. Connie, Aww. thank you. She says, happy 75th birthday, Montgomery College. Thank you, wonderful panelists, for celebrating. Montgomery College is community, affordable, accessible, and flexible. I was privileged to take it, teach at the Rockville campus for 16 years, continue to be a strong advocate. So thank you, Ms. Morella. That was, that's a fantastic uh, note. And for, thanks for sharing your connection. Um, someone asks, my question is what the future holds, what does the future hold for Montgomery College? Um, and what can the broader community do to help support its mission? Can Montgomery College become a four year? Uh, Council member, would you like to no, say something? I was gonna say, Gloria, you certainly know more than I do. I, I think at one time, and I think at all times, I don't think at one time, I think at all times, it's been discussed whether or not Montgomery College would become a four-year four year college. And then the, I guess, the education community got together and, and has have worked with universities of Maryland at Shady Grove 
and or the universities at Shady Grove, I guess is what they call it. But it, it's various uh, uh, colleges there, and you can get your uh, AA from Montgomery College. And Gloria, correct me when I'm wrong. It's not if I'm wrong; it's when I'm wrong. But but um, you can get your your you know AA from Montgomery College or or two years of college, even if you don't get the degree, and transfer to University of Shady Grove. So it's in Montgomery County already. I, okay. I think that really has held up uh, any any thought of this being a four-year institution. I mean, it's it, it's uh, it's it's certainly you'd have to have more uh, facilities. You'd have to have. I mean, there's a lot of. It, it's just not you know with the with the with the magic wand that it could be done. And I think that's been what has been thought about. Please, others, correct me, please. Yeah, no, uh, Councilmember Katz, the, you are completely right. One of the things that that is in the conversations, uh, Ms. Albornoz. Um, one Just of the call things, me Marisol. Uh, Marisol, <laughs> uh, we we are we are trying to have those conversations. We have two specific programs that I believe that could be into the four year institution, which is be, uh, teachers and also in education and also the nursing program. We have a very yes. strong nursing program. So I think that we have the programs that can become make us to be a four year institutions. So th those are in a conversation with the board at this moment as we are trying to expand the college as well in the east count in the east part of the county so those are things that we're looking ahead um, the need for teachers are critical not only in in our town but across everywhere. the nation yeah. is everywhere the yeah. the situation with COVID and nurse nurses it is it is so critical. critical for us that we yeah, need yeah. to be part of the part of ahead of the curve and make sure that we can move the, the institution to that next level so that is, I'm glad that you asked because we're working on that as, as it is. I think it would be wonderful. I, you know, I think it would really be a huge plus um, in many, many ways. Yeah. And so, another thing about well, the common course too, and in terms of transferring um, uh, courses and, 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 cre and credits, that's another discussion because not all the credits sometimes transfer, and that is a huge expense for our students. Yes. As you know, that that is something that we look very closely and trying to see how the common course becomes something more, uh, more substantial for our students and more beneficial. Yeah. One thing that I, I just want to uh, say, um, I actually feel very good about Montgomery College future. And, and the reason why I say that is because, uh, number one, my wife also went to Montgomery College. Um, my kids are in Montgomery Co Public uh, Schools, MCPS. And one of the things that I did learn is Mont uh, Montgomery College has partnered with MCPS to allow dual enrollment, which is a huge, I mean, huge thing. Um, I mean, the more I read about the program, the more I realized this is like a hidden gem. Um, not only it saves you money by, you know, taking college level classes in high school and it saves you time, which is even more important than money. And it makes so much sense. Whoever came or whoever had the vision to say, we're paying $12,000 for a child, for Montgomery Public uh, County Schools, you can use that money at uh, Montgomery College. That is a huge thing, huge Great. benefit for everybody. Um, again, I, I see vision, I see leadership, and that's what it takes to make change. If anything, history only highlights, you know, change and choices that are being made that are going to determine the future. And I see that, and I, I do have a good feeling that Montgomery College is going to be here for a long time and make things happen for the county. And may I add a quick things here? As we are start thinking about the value of education, as we continue to have those discussions, reimagine what it is that I can do in my next life or in my life right now, workforce development have become another set of us that we are taking on. Uh, that retooling, uh, finding another set of skills is critical again, as we would like to be a part of that uh, the economic engine, those uh, biotech uh, jobs, 
technical jobs that were looking for more people to be um, with the credentials needed for that for those type of jobs. So that's something that we're looking. We're not forgetting about this the arts and humanities. Let me put that out there too, because we need a lot of uh, uh, individuals in the social work and world. So mental health issues. So, yeah. but I think that the 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 workforce development is going to be critical for us moving forward. Uh, how about internship programs? Does Montgomery College right now uh, put an emphasis on this for the students? If that's that's <laughs> another, another num number one. Number two, number one again, priority, because we know that that's what is impacting our students to come to the institutions. We're affordable, but we have a... Many people feel that in Montgomery County, everybody is wealthy. Well, the no. story is different. So it has changed tremendously. So we make a huge emphasis that uh, we have a strong uh, foundation. We have a strong group of, uh, of individuals on campus that are doing a fundraising, telling the story, the stories that resonate here go back to say, this is what your donation, your uh, support, tends to uh, gonna offer to the to the to the community uh, to Montgomery County and to the to the state. So we are doing that is uh, a job that we keep uh, supporting and making sure that that is going to be um, uh, available for our students that are in, in those circumstances that needs support. Yes, absolutely. There, if I can just jump in here, uh, students have opportunities to do internships with the Library of Congress through the Smithsonian and through many other local organizations and businesses. And as we know, there are many, many more opportunities now in Montgomery That's County. Great. And uh, students have also um, done internships with uh, Montgomery History. And so <laughs> many, many great. opportunities. Great. I think one of the things moving forward is, um, I like the idea that you're expanding across the county is that your campuses are not just in Upper County, Rockville, and Tacoma, but you're now moving forward to the eastern county of the, of, the, of the county. So I think you're trying to also make it easier for students to get to those campuses just in case they cannot make it from one point to the other. And definitely with the alumni, I'm always pushing that, is that there's opportunity to participate if you graduated from the college you know, or if you attend the college, you just come and join the Alumni Association because they do accept a lot of good ideas. We have diverse people that serve on that, um, on the Board of Governors, Alumni Association. So yeah, I think that too would be a growing need and a workforce development. I mean, that's where I got my um, leadership certificate from. Um, and that was back whenever. So <laughs> really was in, it really was in the, it was in the 90s. But you know, um, and I think that just learning a trade, you know, I think that's a good opportunity as well. And that's something that Montgomery College does, in fact, offer. And your certificate is in um, the nonprofit world, right? Correct. Which is really uh, quite impressive. Yes. I'm going to jump in here. Um, it is 110. So before we finish, I do have a question here that I think is is, is very important to ask um, as we look towards the future. Um, so briefly, uh, can you though, uh, can we panelists uh, provide any ideas for current uh, Montgomery College students? Uh, anything you wish you had known going in? Um, any advice that you could provide? And again, real quickly. Never lose your dreams. Just always, there's always a way to do things. Um, maybe today it might not work, but it could work tomorrow. Don't lose your dreams. Keep fighting for them. And, and if I could add on to that, obviously that makes so much sense. And I wanted to, before I start, I wanted to tell Fernando, I actually hear from Teresa Wright. That she calls me or I call her, or she calls my wife at least once a week. She truly is. You know, Montgomery College is a jewel for Montgomery County. She's the jewel of the jewel of Montgomery yes. County. She truly has saved so many lives. I, I cannot. But uh, but to add on to to what was what was already said, you know, I think that that the every student who goes to Montgomery College, and there's a time, there have been times, and I believe everybody on this panel knows that 
you know, some people every now and then would make fun of the fact that you went to Montgomery College. We were called Harvard on the Pike. We were, you know, yeah. all of these little, these yeah. little digs. But the reality is don't let that get in your way. No. You, you can get the greatest education in at Montgomery College. You always have been able to. You will make connections with people around the world, mm -hmm. which is you know, a lot of what college is about is, is, you know, who can, who can help you get to that next level. And that is where it starts is right here. So if I'm going to give any advice, just appreciate what you have and, yes. and continue from there. I, I would just add, you know, just keep learning, keep using the resources you have, uh, the county offers. And more importantly, remember, Times are changing. Technology is changing things so drastically. The jobs of today will be gone tomorrow. Technology will replace people. And if you don't adapt, you will die like the dinosaurs. One of the things I find is that since volunteering at the college is such an open family, and I think it's connectivity is really what is happening with the college. It is a life learning place. So you can learn anything that you want. All right. Well, with that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, again, thank you, all of you, um, for your phenomenal thoughts and for sharing your experience. Um, here's, uh, here's to the next 75 years and beyond. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs>